Good afternoon, everyone. Antarctica, always mysterious. Remember the third largest iceberg in history to break off November 2017 is now trapped in massive pack ice. Japan Meteorological Association, long-term sea ice trend, Antarctica growing by a lot. This is why Japanese scientist Dr. Takeda Kunihiko comes out and says, we need to focus on cooling, not warming. Antarctic sea ice about to break through the 1981 to 2010 average, but somehow in the newer models, Antarctic sea ice has decreased. Looking at Antarctic winters, downtrend, polar amplification from CO2 not detectable in Antarctica, and now over 600 papers confirming solar impacts on the climate. This is your timeline as our planet cools and the wider the waves become, the more unstable our growing seasons are. And keeping that in mind, you are definitely going to have to learn how to grow some of your own food again. Trueleafmarket.com, heirloom and organic seeds for any grow zone on our planet, microgreens and sprouts. The Adapt 2030 link is below in the description box for True Leaf Market, as well as links to tonight's stories and images. And speaking of that, I've started putting all the videos into blog post form, text, images, steamit.com forward slash adapt2030. Antarctica. Mysterious is an understatement. From stories of lost civilizations buried in the ice to military bases to climate change and everything in between, the mystery deepens further with this newest information coming out. We've seen some amazing images of the front of the iceberg that broke off back in November 2017. It was recorded as the third largest iceberg to collapse and break off. News media covered this extensively, iceberg A68. They're asking what caused it to break away from Antarctica. Underwater volcanoes due to the fact that when it broke off, it was still freezing. As the iceberg came off, they were talking about it entering the shipping lanes, causing hazardous travel for cargo vessels. But now it is totally packed into dense sea ice cover. And a glimpse into sea ice cover for Antarctica. It's right about to break through that 1981 to 2010 average. It looks as if it follows last year, right around August, it will go above that. Then what are they going to say about increasing sea ice in the southern oceans? Also, climatism, pulling out this very interesting data set, SB2. This is the new equivalent data set on the right side, the dark black line. Comparatively to the way we used to measure sea ice, suddenly with the new measurements, that spike that exists now kind of just disappeared. So something contrary to the model predictions is happening down in the southern hemisphere. Now all the while that mainstream media is telling you Antarctic ice is going into a death spiral including land ice, sea ice, there's been articles since 2015 asking why Antarctic ice is at record levels despite global warming. Even NASA, mass gains of Antarctic ice sheet, this is land, is greater than the losses. The story is accompanied from Journal of Glaciology measurements. You can check out where the ice is gaining, where it's being lost. You have to take into consideration ice shelves and underwater volcanoes as well not with just the above surface climate. Also when we're looking out 1978 trends moving forward, the exact opposite of what's supposed to happen. It's supposed to be getting warmer down there, yet it looks like Antarctic winters overland. June, July, August, remember that's the southern hemisphere winter, seem to be decreasing slightly. In Journal of Glaciology, following on with a full peer-reviewed article, mass gains of Antarctic ice sheet exceed the losses. And again, these are back in 2015, and it's been like that. It's been accruing, continuing. And then we come into April 2018, big increase in Antarctic snowfall. Now, global warming proponents would say that it's because of heating oceans, has more evaporation, which causes more clouds, which causes more snowfall. 
But this is one of the driest places on the planet down there. And the temperatures really never exceed freezing even in the center of the continent during summertime. How about the Antarctic winters, the South Polar winters? Decreasing as well. This is from the satellite record. Same time frame, last 40 years plus. And here was the shocker of everything. Japan Meteorological Association, JMA, come out and corrects Antarctic's long-term sea ice trend. It's growing by a lot. So one of the top, if not the top, climate scientist in Japan comes out publicly and says, in the national audience, we need to be focused on cooling, not warming. Cooling is here. It's going to affect our crops. Even talks about galactic cosmic rays. Dr. Takeda Kunihiko. Who is this person anyway? Well, he was the former vice chancellor of the Institute of Science and Technology Research at Chubu University, former vice deputy president at Shibaru Institute of Technology, he also dissented in the 2008 Global Warming IPCC review paper saying CO2 has nothing to do with it. It's all based on cycles of the sun. I like the way he quoted too, global warming seems to be more of a political vehicle that keeps Europeans in the driver's seat and developing nations walking barefoot. Images in his press release and national televised speech talks about cosmic rays, sun's magnetic field, and get ready for heavier cloud cover, which will reduce temperatures on our planet. Now with that being said, let's take a look back at the giant Antarctic iceberg. Even the scientists argue that the calving was not necessarily due to climate change. It may simply reflect the natural growth and decay cycle of an ice shelf, especially if it's growing. A lot of contrary information in the media, but here we go. Polar amplification, Antarctic temperatures, 1979 to 2018. We're clear over on the right. It's about to dip off there, cool again for the next few years, just in the natural cycle. But how low will it really go? Will it dip below 2005? The coldest temperatures for this data set from, since 1979? A lot of people are predicting so. In these next two years, we're going to get cooler than that. And to round things out here, there's now over 600 papers confirming major solar impacts on our climate. This includes grand solar maximums, which raise temperatures, reduce cloud cover with a stronger magnetosphere. They also talk about cosmic rays, solar cycles, grand solar minimums. And we should be paying attention to this a little more. And it will be up to you to do your own research because even these articles coming from the Washington Post, New York Times, as well as the global news media pushing out contrary articles, Antarctic ice loss has tripled in a decade. Okay, you saw all the scientific data sets that are coming out, yet how can the news truly come out with a straight face and then tell you that ice loss is tripling when government institutions are telling you that there's more ice and more snow? as well as the ICE data centers who study this, even NASA coming out. So the smoke and mirrors is for you to weave through yourself with information like this that I present to you. You're a responsible adult. You have to find what's right for you because this is your timeline. As we start to get through the first wave of cooling, the wider the wave becomes, the more unstable our weather is due to shifting jet streams and a weakening magnetosphere our electromagnetic connection to the sun. This just means our growing seasons in the periphery when we're planting and when we're harvesting are gonna to start to mix up and they're gonna be in the wrong time, which means decreased yields, higher food prices, and eventually areas are gonna go offline that are not gonna be able to supply us with our global food demand by hundreds of millions of tons deficit. This is what we should be talking about. This is why I'm bringing it to your attention. We're already in the amplification phase, and from this point forward, it just goes in the extreme weather mix-ups. The latter half of 2018 into 2021, a roller coaster ride for societies, economies, and science. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. If you found any value in this, please remember to click that subscribe button, hit the bell so you can get the latest updates. 
And also, I have more in-depth commentary on my tri-weekly podcast, Mini Ice Age Conversations, and available anywhere on the internet that hosts a podcast. iTunes, Stitcher Radio, SoundCloud, Intune, Libsyn, 